One of the most beloved and memorable characters from the Cross Country Pimpin' series is in big trouble. Robert Pimpsey Banks from San Diego and Lil Plato. They need your prayers. Tell you like this, the same bitch, y'all gonna take wine and die and spend your time? Me, I'm gonna get right on my grind. That minute. That's just the difference, man. But I'm gonna tell you like this, man, I'm opening them doors to real players and real champs. It's like, you know, want a fellowship and step their game up, man. Cause I'm still in the process of stepping mine up every day, but you ain't gonna be able to tell. You gonna be like, that man must've been doing this for a hundred years. Ain't never shed a tear, you know what I mean? It's been happy days around here. But I'm gonna tell you like this, I've been having my up and down, and I'm still around. And the one thing about it is, I am and will be the undisputed man on the coast, man. And if y'all think differently, man, like I say, step it up, bring Check it around. This Check this out, man. Get these motherfuckers some news they could use, man. Everybody always look at a player like yourself. They want to know how they can get to this level, man. Give them some news they could use, man. 15 minutes start a kid, man, in the game, man. Get it to them, man. Hey, tell your people to come on get in this shot, man, because they looking real delicious over there, man. Look like Destiny's Child and shit. Get on over here. Take some knees. So if y'all want to dispute it, if y'all want to dispute it, there it is. Some of you niggas can't even get chicks to act like this. This is what's going to happen, all right? Y'all want the, the, the fastest way to get like me, I'm going to tell you like this. Let them bullshit feelings go, all right? All that shit that your mama told you about their respectfulness and all that old shit, kick that shit out the door first, man. You got to say it like this. I want to get some money. I got to find me a... a, 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 a co-partner that wants to get some money just like me that's the first thing you got to see you got to feel it believe it and go with it that's the first step other than that man you know it's got to be in you can't be on you ain't you said that before yeah i think i said that once or twice man but as y'all can see man they down here on the knees bowing out to this man it is not a motherfucking game it's not an act man pimpsey is the motherfucking truth Okay, man, two members of the Black Mob Scandalous Enterprise, which consisted of two North Park-based criminal street gangs, were convicted by federal jury to July 14th. Um, the reason I'm just not reporting on this because I made a report on this news. I hate doing, first off, I hate doing stories like this about people that I know that's been on my films. But on July 14th, these guys were convicted. Now... I covered this story on um, Cross Country Pimpin' 5, but I didn't really go into detail. I just talked about a big um, case that jumped off in San Diego where 24, member, 24 men were arrested. They arrested people from uh, all over the country, but basically out of San Diego claiming they were a North Park gang. As a gentleman on the uh, video, on my DVD, Cross Country Pimpin' 5, you can get it now on 2 TV.com. he expressed that North Park is not a gang area. Major Cross Country sex trafficking ring has been busted and San Diego is involved. We learned just hours ago that dozens of alleged North Park gang members have been arrested in this operation. NBC7's Megan Tarizian is just back from the federal courthouse with the latest. Megan. Well, Monica, 24 alleged gang members and gang associates in North Park are charged in an indictment of a racketeering conspiracy. It involved cross country sex trafficking of underage girls and women, plus murder, kidnapping, robbery, and drug-related crimes. When you have a criminal street gang like the one that is involved in this case, the RICO statute is really the best tool that we have to go against street gangs. These arrests and investigation by the San Diego Police Department, FBI, and the U.S. Attorney's Office. This morning, they made 17 arrests in San Diego, Arizona, and New Jersey, and served 11 search warrants here and in Arizona. According to the federal grand jury indictment, the organization known as BMS was made up of several North Park gangs, primarily the Black Mob and the Scandalous Gangs. These alleged gang members would lure underage girls and women from El Cajon Boulevard to work as prostitutes and also use social media like Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube showing rap videos like this one that promised glamorous lifestyles. Then they allegedly branded the women, branded the women, tattooing them with gang 
gang signs or barcodes. There were approximately 60 victims from San Diego. At least 11 of them were underage. Some of the young girls, the underage girls, were kids who lived at home with their parents or with their guardians. They're kids that went to school. They're kids that socialized with their friends and over the internet, just like regular teens. Agents seized multiple firearms, ammunition, cash, luxury cars, and marijuana while serving the search warrants this morning. At one of the locations, police found what appeared to be an unexploded ordinance. Megan Tversi and NBC7. Yeah. Let's talk about, tell me, what do you know about the, um, the big arrest that just happened? As much as you know in detail about that happened with the pimp sting that happened in um, San Diego. Just um, I just know what I for what I read in the in the newspapers and heard on the news. I, um, I didn't know the uh, young men. Um, a lot of them like I didn't know them extremely well, you know. Um, I had met some of them before, but they was from a different area of town than where I'm from. But the funny thing is that a lot of the things that I did read in the uh, paper, um, some of it was like ridiculous. Like the part of town that they from is, is not even a gang area whatsoever. And they try to like put a lot of, uh, you know, trump up a lot of gang charges on them. And that's the, the area of town, there, there's no gang there at all. So that part I know to be false. And so when, when I see something like that, part of, part of it that I know to be false, it makes me kind of question the whole thing, you know? Like, you know, I don't know. You know, or, or, or is everything they said about them false? Because I know that's false. No, no, that's no, North Park is no gang area. There's no gang in North Park whatsoever. So you believe that the media and maybe the authorities are possibly taking just a loose-knit group of friends and trying to make them into something they're really not? Absolutely. But they know that, though. They know, they know uh, you know, it's, it's not a situation where... They maybe thought it was a gang. They know what's going on just as well as anybody in the streets. And they know there's not a gang over there. So the only thing I can surmise from, from it is that they are trying to put something together and make it seem a lot more sinister than what it was in order to uh, garner publicity, you know, to prosecute the case. Why do you think they go to such a serious extent to prosecute these young men? Um, um, like I said, I, 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 don't, I don't know a lot of the details of the case, you know. From I'm speaking what, from, from historical st uh, historical standpoint of San Diego and the interaction with authorities. And well, San, San Diego is um, it's interesting because San Diego is... Uh, a predominantly um, white, uh, Republican, conservative city. And, um, you know, any, any um, young black man who looks like he may be making some money is going to stick out like a sore thumb in that city. Um, San Diego is, is I, I, I've often called it uh, white people's Atlanta, you know. It's like the, it's like the promised land for them. It's, it's beautiful there. They can have it their way. Uh, but for, for a black man, it's, 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 not really, it's not really the place to be in a, in a, in a lot of cases. You know, if you're doing something, you're not supposed to be doing in San Diego, eventually they will catch up to you. And they're gonna make it look like you was doing even more than what you was doing. Absolutely. No question about it. These guys were in a clique, little high school clique, and if you wanna call it an association of friends, a gang, 
then that's what these white folks in the courtroom is calling it. So you have to be aware of that. If you got a clique and you got some partners, y'all all went to high school together, y'all got a little clique, y'all name yourself something, boom. To those people, they're going to call it a gang if you're doing any gang activity. Now, um, they were convicted yesterday. They were convicted on July, 5th, July 14th of participating in a racket, racketeering enterprise involving sex trafficking of minors and adults, as well as robbery and drug sales. The jury found defendants Robert Pimpsey Banks III and Tony Lil Plato Brown guilty of conspiracy to conduct enterprise affairs through a pattern of racketeering activity at the conclusion of a two-plus-week trial and 10 hours of deliberation. Ain't that cold? Them white folks spend 10 hours deliberating, and they deliver you news that's going to change your life. You're only going to spend 10 hours debating on my life. The jury also found both Brown and Banks guilty of three counts of sex trafficking of minors and one count of transportation of a minor for prostitution. U.S. District Judge John A. Houston said sentencing for October 3rd, 2016 at 8.30 a.m. However, that has been uh, moved back. The date now is November 28th where they'll go to sentencing which is the reason why I'm doing this um, news update now, because they need your prayers. Any um, character witnesses and stuff, any character letters that you could write on their behalf, but most importantly, these brothers need your prayers, man. The defendants face up to 20 years in prison for each count. Now, the two convicted Defendants were arrested and charged in 2014 as part of a larger investigation involving 22 other defendants. 22 have pleaded guilty. Now, let me let me just break this down. Listen. In all seriousness, if the, the, the these guys were convicted, Pimpsey and Lil Plato were convicted, the summary of their charges is conspiracy to conduct a enterprise affairs through a pattern of racketeering activity, sex trafficking of children, uh, maximum penalty for both of those charges are 20 years each, and transportation of a minor for trans for prostitution. Maximum penalty is 20 years. Now, this is uh, investigating agencies on this is San Diego Police Department and the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Now, 20 years each, they took it to trial. 24 people were arrested. PMC and Lil Plato took theirs to trial. Obviously, they took it to trial because they felt like they could beat it. I'll say this. If the feds kicked in my door right now to arrest me and said, Michael Moroy, we got you on charges of conspiracy to distribute heroin in the New York area or tri-state area of D.C. or whatever the case may be. I would honest to God look at them in the face and be like, what kind of deal can you give me? Now, I know for a fact I have never sold any heroin. I don't even hang out in no fucking New York. So I, I know I haven't done it. However, when the feds come to get you, I'm saying that to say this. When the feds come to get you, they have done a very thorough investigation and they pretty much got you, bro. They got something on you. I have yet to see too many people wiggle their way out of the feds. You know what I mean? I've seen people go and thought they was going to get 20 years and they only got like five or, or something like that. They, they didn't get things broken down. But usually when the feds come to put the clutch on you, the clutch on you, they got you on something. It's extremely fucking sad. Pimpsey and Lil Plato was locked up with 24 other guys. Like I said, I covered this story in Cross Country Paper 5. I didn't go into detail on it because to be absolutely honest, I thought Pimpsey would get off. I thought he would beat these charges. The stuff they had trumped up on him, you know, uh, gang kingpin and, and, and all these underage, bro. I just, in my mind, I'm thinking like, nah, not the, nah. No, I was like, he he going to beat those charges. And obviously, he thought he would beat them too, so he took them to trial. So before anybody think, yo, it's over with for the brothers, man, think about this. The fact that they took it to trial. Well, here's the thing. When you take it to trial, they usually try to give a guy the most harsh penalties, right? However, if you take it to trial, you get convicted. You do have action at an appeal because you got found guilty 
you didn't take a you didn't take a deal. If you take a deal, that means once you get convicted and you take a deal, you don't have a chance at an appeal. You have to do that time. So the fact that he took it all the way to trial, that means that his attorney may turn around and get him on an appeal and get him back where he can give some of that time back. Now, as far as the time that he's facing, like I say, they sent this him on uh, November 28th. Uh, what is it? November 28th, he gets sentenced. Um, November 28th at 2.30 p.m., Federal Court Building, 13th Floor, Judge Houston. Now, when they get convicted, it's a maximum penalty is 20 years in prison. Now, that's maximum. I don't know what the minimum is. I mean, the minimum could be whatever the judge decides to give them. Um, I, d I really don't know what how they're going to treat these guys, seeing how out of 24 people, 22 pled guilty. These two took it to trial, all the way to trial. You know, in many cases, now I'm not saying it's going to happen with them, but in many cases, when you take those people to trial and make them spend that money going all the way to trial, they have a little chip on their shoulder when it's time to convict. So anything could happen. If the maximum penalty is 20 years, and they got three charges of 20 years each. They could run that concurrent, meaning that 20 years for all three charges, that's 60 years, but they just have to do the 20. Or they could be assholes and run it consecutive. So it's 20 years for each charge, and they run them back to back, 20, 20, 20. So you got to do 60 years. Heaven forbid they don't have to do that. I don't think I think these brothers have been locked up since 2014, to be absolutely honest. And I'm not trying to be sympathetic. I know sometimes when I do these reports, people, you know, they send me inboxes, messages. Sometimes they leave comments and they, they say slick shit. Hey, man, why you always sticking up for these dudes to get caught with these underage? Man, you guys know as well as I know, on all my films, I've always preached, leave those kids alone. Don't mess with minors. I've always said that. I've always been outspoken on it. But I find it extremely ironic that every time one of these guys are getting caught up on a case, it just so happened to be that they are charged with a minor. And now I'm so I'm around some of these guys and I'm knowing these guys and I don't see none of these traits that people are trying to paint the picture of of that like these guys saying these guys are gang members and organized crime and all this stuff. I know that those are trumped up charges made by the feds and the San Diego Police Department to get a conviction. And it looks good on the news. But these guys are not bad guys. Pimpsey was a dude that had a record label, was making some good music. And I know you're saying everybody has a record label. They even tried to use that in the trial, saying that these guys were using music videos and they record labels to get women. But the man also had a store in San Diego where he was selling clothes and stuff like that. A nice little store. And um, I'm saying that to say that, man, these wasn't the run-of-the-mill bad guys. This guy was a good guy. Genuinely a really a genuinely a really good guy. Now we got to do a little bit of editing and checking it on. Now I got it like Maroy like it too up in here, man. Man, too real, too live, man. Ain't no job, man. Let me see. Oh, yeah, it's snowing in there. That's cool. Hey, I was kind of dreading this trip, church, but it looks like it's going to be all right. Yeah, you do. <laughs> I'm going to turn it into this, man. We're going into the church goes to get the church mission now, man, you know, because you know how the church is, man. They church on the move when church get ready to be on the move, man. But young church got to have a church, man, when it's time for church, baby. We're going to go ahead, ride on now, smoke it up real big, drink real big, chill with some model type chicks, you know. We're going to do it real live, man. All through the weekend going to be like this, man. This is the beginning. Oh, man, it's Pimp C from Dago, man. If they didn't see it and they didn't know it by the red and the gold, man, they was looking at the wrong face to begin with, Jack. <laughs> believe and believe it, man. I do it real live all the time, man. You know where you're going, right, baby? He's like, cool. Yeah. Everybody, this is uh, Maroy. Does a lot of big pictures and big films and stuff like that. What was your name? Maroy. Maroy? We're gonna be we gonna be with us all weekend and you know what I mean doing the camera thing. Yeah, I'm gonna be on TV all weekend. We ready? Yo man, what's up man? We here in San Diego. Calm down city with a San Diego charger.
Uh -huh. And uh, we ain't got enough light. All right, look, how the light look? They, they cool? Here with my man Pimp C. You know what I mean? Yeah, baby, how's it going now? He about to smoke me about this motherfucker, so you know, see you get fired up. I'm gonna have to break back down that way, man. Don't tell me about what we got going on this weekend, man. You know, we got this weekend, man. There's another young player, man, you know, doing what we call the ritual of stepping his motherfucking game up, right? And, uh, you know, I'm just gonna go ahead and try to go ahead and prove my validity, you know what I'm saying? As a as a football player, would come and shout out of college, man, hitting the NFL, you know, I'm gonna go out to my first day and sweat it on out, man, and run two more laps than everybody else. Run, do 20 more push ups than everybody else, shit, dig? That's really what it is, man. We're gonna get down tonight, man, go to the Fiesta Hall, you know. I don't know how many I'm gonna pack in there, man. You know, I'm a known figure in this town, so we're gonna really put my, my majority notoriety to the test, you know. We're gonna see who know me and who don't, you know, but. I mean, I could, I could put my money on the black and say, man, I'm finna, I'm finna get it up, man, around here with these motherfuckers. Come on, man, show them the jewels and tools, man. Show them oh, them yeah, them. man, you know, man. Today, today, I'm, I'm rose golded out, man, you know. I go ahead and throw that rose gold rolly on them yellow diamonds, man. These just came out around Christmas time, you know. So you can't go find them, you. That's gonna cost you a 20. Just talking about it, man. About 20, just talking about it, regular. Just even, don't even go in the Ben Bridge and them talking about a rose gold rolly, man, okay? Unless you got 20 stacks, they're gonna laugh at you, man. See over here, man, I don't even know how many carrots. I don't even ask about carrots, man. I just go ahead and I look at it, man. I see it, I buy the motherfucker, man, you know? You see, I'm talking about, man, I'm just looking. I got yellow and rose gold and uh, white diamonds in my, in my, yeah, man, I'm, you know, I just do this thing, you know? I got a full carrot, you know what I mean, up in there. Them gonna run you about 10 when you get done with the bullshit, man. You know what I'm saying, baby? And that's how we doing it, man, you know? Put that put that put that crucifix on him, man. That's gonna pretty much do it all day long, man. As long as you come out shop as Maroy around here, man, you know, it's gonna all go to work for you at once, Jack. You know? Oh man, I'm known for wearing these horns, you know what I'm saying, man. You know, hey, just, just take the gator and throw his whole mouth on my foot, man. You know, I'll, I'll put my foot through his butt. Real life, Jack. Real life, baby. But when when the feds come with charges like conspiracy and racketeering, it's very difficult to beat these charges. Man, let me explain to you guys for, for those of y'all looking at you. Once again, I'm not a lawyer. I know I speak a lot of stuff about law because I watch a lot of this stuff, but I'm not a lawyer, so don't just take my advice. If you have any legal problems, go consult your counselor. But a conspiracy charge is a secret plan by a group to do something unlawful. That's conspiracy. Conspiracy means just about anything. You understand? Conspiracy is a very hard charge to be because conspiracy could be me and my partner sitting here or playing on the phone talking about we're going to be some drug lords. And, Man, we need to get some dope. We need to sell it over here. We need to do that. Now, we don't have to go do it. We don't have to go sell the dope. We could have just been talking about it, but that is a conspiracy. That's a conspiracy. And racketeering is, shit, racketeering with the RICO Act is something that they usually use for the mob. But they've been using it for guys in the game of pimping and prostitution because they feel like it's a part of organized crime. It's organized meaning because if you're a pimp, and you have two or three chicks, okay, now that's two or three people, and now you got a partner, and he got two or three chicks, or he got one chick, and you call the dude, and you like, hey, man, what's cracking, man? Oh, man, it's over here. We over here in Chicago. We getting money. Oh, man, we over here in uh, 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 Jersey. It's getting money over here, and you jump on the plane and go over there. Boom, that's racketeering. That's racketeering because you have now helped organize a movement for you to go get some money. I know it sounds weak. I know it sounds fucked up. But, ladies and gentlemen, that's where we at right now. And it's not looking good. So, Robert Pimpsey Banks and Lil Play-Doh, man, they need your help, man. I'm going to put their address on here so you can write those brothers. Send an email to character witnesses for Lil Play-Doh and Pimpsey. Hopefully, the judge will be lenient with them. Hopefully, the judge will say, man, these guys... Took it all the way to trial. I just don't understand how a motherfucker take it all the way to trial. 
and a jury deliberates for 10 hours. 10 hours, you're going to judge my life in 10 hours. In 10 hours, you're going to figure out what you're going to do with my life. You're going to convict me where I could go spend time in prison. And you did that in 10 hours. You spent a day deliberating. Man, on another note, man, since this guy is one of the most memorable characters of cross-country pimping, I think it's important for people that have watched my films to understand that, you know, it's kind of like when I watched this film called Hood to Hood, right? A great documentary film. Shouts out to Cash Out Keys. I watched the film Hood to Hood, and then on part one, you got all these guys talking all this killer shit, right? What they gonna kill, what they gonna do, woo-woo. Then come part two, you see how many guys from part one actually did the killing. How many of them are actually dead? Oh, this guy died. This guy this. That gives you a validity to how real that documentary is. It makes you say, damn, that shit was real. Dude was serious when he said when he see them niggas, he gonna kill them. Because on part two, he really killed them or he really got killed. That's how the, the validation of cross-country pimping is. The documentary series, why it's very entertaining. It's very flashy and flamboyant at times. You know, I try to show people these stories of people. And, you know, some people, you know, they might get into a little trouble, but they bounce back and they do good. But for the most part, there's a lot of there's a lot of people that get in trouble in the game and they really can't bounce back from it. You know what I mean? So that's why I always try to show the good, the bad and the ugly. You know, guys are getting 77 years, 100 years. And sometimes people don't see that or pay that any attention because they're so busy looking at the, the jury and the cars and the girls. Uh, you know, I wish I could. I wish I had a bunch of that stuff, a bunch of that money and do a bunch of things that I would love to do. But, you know, I got to move at my own pace because I don't want to be sitting in front of 12 white folks who deliberate my future. And they only took 10 hours to decide on everything I've worked for my whole life, everything I've done, everything that makes me the person I am. I don't want to sit in front of a jury of 12 white folks and they say, yeah, we want to see that nigga do 60 years in prison. So November 28th, man, we'll know the decision on PMC, Young PMC and Young Plato. Little play though. I wish them both um, the best of luck, man. They're in my prayers, man. And I'm leaving the address right here so y'all could send letters and money, kites, any type of support. The game is real, man. Y'all leave a comment at the bottom, man. Y'all tell me what you think, man. Too real for TV.com. Subscribe to the channel, please. I appreciate your support. Too real for TV.com.